Hello again. This is the second part in a two-part series on logarithms. In the first part, I talked about common logs. In this part, I'm going to talk about natural logs. Now, this is the definition for logarithms that you see in all the math books, and it's certainly correct. But I always have a problem trying to understand that. So let's remind ourselves about common logarithms. Common logarithms are logarithms to the base 10. Okay? And we write it out L-O-G. So the log of 10 is 1, and the log of 100 is 2, and so on. Write that little meter. There we go. So this is the power to which you have to raise 10 to get that. Now these don't have to be integers, and these don't have to be integer powers of 10. Okay. Natural logarithms behave exactly the same way only they have a different base. Common logs have a base, that number there and that number there, b, of 10. Okay, so common log those are base 10. And a natural log is base, and it's a number called e. Now e is a number that you wouldn't necessarily see in routine calculations, although you see it written out as e. You won't see the numerical value written out very often. And it's just a number. It's a number like pi. It's a number that's appeared so many times in mathematics over the, the centuries, over the millennia, that it's been given its own name. That's what pi is. Pi is just a number that's appeared so many times, it's been given its own name. e is similar to pi in the sense that it's also irrational. That means there's no two numbers whose ratio equals e. That means that the decimal expansion for E goes on forever. And E is approximately 2.71828 something. Right? But remember, it's just a number. And it's taken used as a base for logarithms. It turns out to be a little more convenient to use E as a base than it is to use 10 for a base. Now, you can use any number for a base. There's no mathematical reason not to. Um, you see base 2 logarithms occasionally. There's no mathematical reason why you couldn't make uh, logs to the base 31 if you wanted to. It might not be convenient, but you could certainly do it. Now, just to show you here, um, log, natural, lo I'm sorry, common log of 10 is 1. The natural log, which we usually write out as ln of 10, is not 1 anymore, okay, because this isn't 10. This is a, a number smaller than 10. This turns out to be 2.302585, and it goes out, but that's enough decimal places there. That means e to the 2.302585 power equals 10. Just like over here, let me erase that, 10 to the 1 equals 10. There are just two different ways of writing the same thing. Now, big question, the question I always had is, why e? Why not some other number? Why would you pick this strange number that you have to uh, derive? Well, the most obvious reason is how it behaves when you're doing derivatives and integrals, is how it's treated when you're doing calculus. Here's the big deal. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That means the integral of e to the x is e to the x. This makes things very simple. When you're dealing with common logs, this isn't true anymore. Okay, and I'm going to want to show you real quick why this is true. And it turns out to be very, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the definition of a derivative for you. Okay. And this is something that I'm sure you saw in a math class somewhere. I know I did. There you go. That's the definition of a derivative. Really, it's just the definition of a slope. Remember, rise over run equals slope? That's how they always explain it to you in American schools. Rise is the vertical distance. Run is the horizontal distance. So that's the change in vertical distance on a plot between two points. And that's the horizontal distance between those two points. That's just a slope. It's a, uh, between two, line, two points. And if those two points get really, really, really close together, this turns out to be the slope at a point. That's a derivative. Well, what if 
f of x equals a to the x, all right, where a is just a number, and a can be anything right now. I don't care what a is yet, but we're going to start, we'll, we'll show why we want a to turn into e. So let's just plug in a to the x everywhere we see f to f of x. So just, just do what the mathematics says and it will work out fine. Okay, so all I've done is I've, I've substituted a to the x in here. All right, so far so good. Well, let's make one more simplification. Okay, a to the x, a to the delta x, minus a to the x over delta x. So, a to the x plus delta x power equals a to the x times a to the delta x. This is kind of that, that logarithm thing. I'm getting to add exponents. Um, so what I'm going to do here, since a to the x doesn't have delta x in it, I'm going to pull this out front, and I can do this. Okay, I'll get out of your way here in a second. Okay, now that's still the expression for a derivative. I haven't done anything uh, mathematically incorrect. Everything's legitimate here. Now. My life would be easier if everything in that bracket became 1. I want this to go to 1. All right? That would mean that I would replace this with e to the, with, I'm sorry, a to the x. If the derivative of a to the x was a to the x, that would be great. So how do I make that happen? That means this thing here, this limit, it's inside those brackets, has to go to 1. Well, there's only one number that makes that happen, and guess what number it is. Now, just to make sure you uh, believe me here, I tried this. I made delta x really, really, really small, 10 to the minus 10 or something like that. And I calculated this. If a equals 2, then that limit, then the limit goes to, oh, that expression in brackets goes to 0 0.6931, uh, all right? If a equals 3, then that limit goes to 1.0986, all right? So there you go. That's why. That's less than e and that's more than e, so it's easy to imagine that if this number was exactly e, if a equals 2.71a, 2a, da, 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 then the limit goes to 1, which is what we want. Okay? So only if a equals e, only if that's true, does that derivative equal itself. That's what we need to know. Now, I've got about a minute and a half here, and I want to tell you real quickly how to calculate E. If you use a Maclaurin series, which is the uh, an infinite series that's a, a variation of the Taylor series, E is this. Okay? It's 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, and so on. Now that comes from a Maclaurin series, so you can have to work that out. I don't have enough time to show you here. If you write, write these numbers down, well, any, the, the factorial of 0 is 1, so that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 half. Now the factorial of 3 is 1 6, because it's 3 times 2. Okay, 6 times 4, that's going to be 24, plus, I believe the next one is 120, that's 5 factorial, check me on that. If you add this series up, you're going to get E. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is already 2 and a half, so you can see in those first three terms you're getting close. So now we know natural logarithm acts just like a common logarithm, like any other logarithm, it just has a different base. Its base is E. It's valuable because e to the x is its own derivative and its own integral. And also, now we know how to calculate e. So there you go.